Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 7-1, the distributive property. In this lesson, you will use the distributive property to write equivalent numerical expressions, as you see here, and you will use the distributive property to write equivalent algebraic expressions. What do we mean when we say numerical expressions? Well, they are expressions, or expressions are equivalent expressions when they have the same value. Example, one shows how the distributive property relates to equivalent expressions. And we're going to look at that in just a second, but here is the key concept for this lesson. In words, the distributive property is to multiply a sum or difference by a number. Multiply each term inside the parentheses or brackets by the number outside the parentheses. Okay, so you see here, for example, parentheses, we call them brackets as well. If you have a number on the outside, you multiply it with each number on the inside. So you have a times b and a times c, which would be ab plus ac. Okay, or you could do the same with subtraction. So it would be a times b and a times c, separated by the subtraction symbol. With numbers, 5 times 6 and 5 times 7. 5 times 6 is 30. And 5 times 7 is 35, so it would be 30 plus 35. Or with subtraction, and you don't necessarily have to write the number in front of the parentheses, you can write it after the parentheses and still use the distributive property, because this entire term in, inside the parentheses is being multiplied with the number on the outside. So it would be 8 times 3 and 8 times 9. So you have 8 times 9 minus 8 times 3, so 72 minus 24. Okay, so let's look at example one. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, why not just use order of operation and do what's inside the parentheses and then multiply with the number on the outside. That's definitely a way to do it, but we're not practicing order of operation. We are using a different method called the distributive property. So we're going to use the distributive property to write each expression as an equivalent numeric expression. Then evaluate the expression. Okay, so let's see what we're doing. We have, let's look at example A. We have five times, remember the parentheses or brackets mean multiplication, right? When between these two terms. So we have five times 12 plus four, right? Like I mentioned, you could just simply add 12 and four and you would get 16 and then 16 times five is 80. And then I would get you to your answer using order of operation, or we're practicing the distributive property, which is a different method of doing it. We have 5 times 12 and 5 times 4. This is going to be useful when we start using variables. When we start having variables inside and, we're, and we want to simplify an expression and then find like terms, you will have to use distributive property. You won't have an option. So might as well learn with um, regular integers. So. Let's go ahead and see and see what this looks like. 5 times 12, you get 60. And then 5 times 4, you get 20. You add the 2, and you get your 80. A common mistake that I often find is that people will multiply the first number right here, 5 times 12, and write 60. But they for, they'll forget to do the second one. They'll forget to do 5 times 4. And instead, they'll just simply write plus 4 and they write that their answer is 64. That is incorrect. Remember to multiply the term outside of the parentheses with the numbers inside, both of them, both numbers inside the parentheses. So you can do the same for subtraction. And you can see here now we're using a rational number. 8.2 times three will be 24.6 and 8.2 times 20, okay, it's 164, and then once you get those values, you subtract them, you find the difference, and there's your answer. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, try these two, and then play the video to check your answer. Okay, I hope you paused the video and you're ready to check. So here we go, let's use the distributed property. Again, you don't have to do order operation where you will just add these two and multiply, because we're practicing the distributive property because it will come in handy later on when you have a number 
or a coefficient with a variable inside the, the brackets and you, need, and you need to multiply it with the number on the outside and it's very useful for equations particularly when you have to start finding like terms to simplify an equation so take my word for it trust me that for now the skill is to learn distributive property and let's practice that even if it seems a little longer to you so let's go ahead and multiply the number outside the brackets with both numbers inside the brackets so we get 3 times 4 is 12 plus 4 times 6 is 24 and when we add the two numbers together we get 36 okay let's go over to question B okay now we're multiplying with a fraction or what we call a rational number and we're looking for three quarters of these numbers so three quarter of nine yeah it means you have to break up nine into four parts and you need to tell me what three of those parts are so if I were to break up nine into four parts just a quick mental math on the side I would have two 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 that breaks it up and it only gets me to eight so the other whole I would have to break that up into quarters right into quarters as you see right here and 2 decimal 2 5 times 4 equals 9 so there's my 9 and I only need 3 of them because we're asking for 3 out of 4 of 9 3 out of 4 of 9 so this would be 2 4 6 75 so that would give me 6 75 or 6 and 3 quarters 6 75 minus and then two broken up into four parts it's simply 0.5 and I need three of those so 1.5 now you could have done this using bracket using um, equivalent fractions right and the way that would look is like this three quarters times nine and you put the nine over one then you would cross reference and there's no cross referencing so it's just three times nine is 27 and 4 times 1 is 4. And how many 4s are in 27? 6 of them, right? 4 times 6. And what do I have left over? I would have 3 left over, over 4. And there it is. So 6 and 3 quarters, or 6 and 3 quarters, as you see that, right? Um, okay, so then we go ahead and we find the difference between these two numbers. And I subtract the 1, and then I subtract the 0.5, and that gives me 5 decimal to 5 or written as a mixed number is 5 and 1 quarter right the distributive property is also great for helping you do mental math for example the distributive property allows you to find some products mentally so for example you can find 7 times 34 mentally by evaluating so what you need to do is you separate the 34 into two friendly numbers into 30 and 4 and then you simply do 7 times 30 or 7 times 3 and then you can add a 0 which would be 210 and then 7 times 4 which is 28 so you have your 210 plus your 28 and you get your 238 as you can see there okay so that helps let's look at example 2 financial literacy on a school visit to Washington DC did Charlie and his class visited the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum Tickets to the IMAX movie cost $8.99. Find the total cost for 20 students to see the IMAX movie. So I would do this two different ways. I would multiply the 20 times 8 and the 20 times 99 cents. Or you round this number to $9 and take away a penny for each one. So you would take away 20 pennies. Okay, that's two ways to do it. So let's see here, because 20 times 9 would be 180, and if you take away the 20 pennies, it would be 179.80. That's how to do it mentally. You can use the distributive property and mental math to find the total cost for the movie. To find the total cost mentally, find 20. Oh, there it is. This is the second one I was talking about. 20 times 9, right? So you're rounding this number up, and then you also want to take a penny for each one of these 9s. Take a penny away, so that you know when you multiply 20 times negative 0 decimal 0 1, 
you're going to have 0 decimal 2, right? 20 pennies. So how does that look? There you have it. This is how you would set up the distributive property, the equation, which is equal to this. Then you have 180 minus 20 cents equals 179. So the total cost is $179.80. Okay, let's check here. I'm not reading this one statement, the check statement, because I hope you read it on your own. And I don't read it so that I can keep the videos short, just for future reference. Okay, here's the two got it questions. I'd like you to try these. I'll read them through, and then I want you to pause the video and try it. 2A, a spaghetti dinner at the Italian Village restaurant costs $10.25. Use the distributive property and mental math to find the total cost of the dinner for Sharita, her brother, and her parents. So one, two, and parents, mom and dad, will be three, four. So it's four people all eating the same meal. How would you do that? Okay, and then after dinner, they each order gelato for $1.50. What is the new total? So we're looking for the new total. So remember to find this sum, okay, or this product times four, and add it to the total of the meal. Remember, they're looking for the new total. Okay, go ahead, pause the video and try it now. Okay, I hope you paused the video and you're ready to check your answer. So for number one, we have four people, correct? Eating a meal that costs $10.25, or you can write it as $10 and 25 cents. When I distribute these, I get $40, or when I do my, my product, when I find the product, plus $1. So my total is $41 for the meal. That's 2A. 2B is a two-part question, because I have to add both totals at the end. But first, I need to find the price of four gelatos at a dollar and 50 cents. Four times one is four. Sorry, I should be drawing how I distribute four. I did four times 10 here, and then four times 25 cents. I'm doing four times one is four, and four times a half is two. So that gives me plus two. And that equals six. And when I add to find the total, remember they want the total value, 41 plus six equals 47 dollars is my total for the meal and as i've mentioned in the past word problems need to be answered with words so here's our therefore symbol three dots therefore the total cost for the meal would be 47 dollars now let's practice using the distributive property algebraically you can model a distributive property by using algebra tiles and variables. So here we have, for example, two, as you can see the two on the outside, x's times four, which equals two total x's, and two times four is eight, eight singles. You can see right there, right? So this right here is equal to the same as two x's and two times four, which is eight. Okay, and this is where distributive property works well to simplify equations because inside the bracket, I cannot add these two terms because they're unlike. So I cannot add 4 plus x. I can only multiply them. So I will go ahead and multiply my 2 times the x and 2 times the 4. Okay, example 3. Let's practice the distributive property with algebraic expressions. So here we have. 4 times x plus 5. Distribute the 4 inside the parentheses, and you'll have 4x plus 20, right? So there it is. And this is actually complete, because you cannot add these two terms. They are unlike and cannot be added. And you can see the same on this side. Okay, you have 6 times 10 is 16, 6 times y is 6y. And there you go, 6y plus 60. Okay, if you think you got it, Go ahead and try 3a and 3b. Pause the video now. Okay, 
2a. I hope you paused the video and you are ready to check. 2.4 times a is 2.4a. 2.4 times 5 is 12. And there it is. That's our answer. 2.4a plus 12. And then we have question 3b. Okay. And we have 3 times 6 is 18. And 3 times b is 3b. So 3b plus 18. And that's it. Those are our answers. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at example 4. Use the distributive property to write each expression as an equivalent algebraic expression. Okay, so we have 3 times n minus 4. We distribute the 3 inside the parentheses. And remember, 3 um, times a negative number is going to be negative 12, right? So you can just set write m minus 12. And here they're telling you to add a, an addition sign. So rewrite m minus 4 as m and minus 4. Do you see that? And then that's the proper way to do it. So and is the plus sign. So you go ahead and you rewrite it as so. And you have 3 times m plus 3 times negative 4. And when you're done, you have 3m minus 4. Now, could you have done it where you just simply multiply 3 times m is 3m, and then 3 times negative 4 is negative 12? For sure, you could have. But this is the proper way to do it, and it will help you later on when you are doing longer, more complex equations. Okay, let's take a look here now, where our rational number on the outside, outside the parentheses, is a negative. And we have negative 9.5 times n, negative 9.5 times negative 7, or minus 7. Again, you would want to rewrite it as plus negative 7. So you have n and negative 7. So that when you have a negative times a negative, you will get your positive. And these two negatives will cancel each other out and just leave you with a plus 66.5. Okay, here are the last two questions for this practice. Please pause the video and try these two on your own, and then we will check it. Pause now. Okay, I hope you paused the video, and you are ready to check. So we have question 4a, and we have 2 thirds of d. 2 thirds of d is simply 2 thirds d. We don't know what d is yet, right? So, And then we have 2 thirds times negative 3, or times... So, in the example, they told us to change that to um, d plus minus 3. And if that's the case, then I'm going to have plus negative 2 thirds of d is negative 2. Sorry, 2, two thirds of negative 3, sorry, is negative 2. And that simply becomes... 2 thirds d minus 2. Okay, and for 4b, we have negative 7 times e becomes negative 7e. Right? And then a negative times a negative becomes a positive. Or at the, as they said in the video, change that to e, or on the example, sorry, above, e plus negative 4. So you're multiplying negative times a negative and it's going to become a positive when it becomes 28. Okay, there you have it. I hope you got it correct and I hope you are ready for your guided practice. Here are your guided practice questions. Remember, you can always go back to the video and check example 1. If you are unsure on how to do the questions 1 to 4, you can check example 2. Example 3 and 4 if you are unsure on how to do any of these. Okay, that's it for today. See you next class.